Hey everybody, I'm back again and I have a review of James Baldwin's If Beale Street Could Talk. Um, this book uh, was written, I think it was in 1974. Um, the only other book that I've read by him, I think, is Go Tell It on the Mountain. And yeah, I think that's all I've read. So... I decided to pick this one up because it just seemed really um, out of the ordinary of some of the other things that he is more known for having written. And basically, this is a story of Tish and Fanny. Um, Tish and Fanny are desperately in love. Um, Tish is quite young, naive, and impressionable, and she is pretty hopelessly, desperately in love with Fanny. Um, they meet when they're very young. Um, I think uh, Tish is maybe six or seven years old and Fanny is a couple of years older or something like that, like 10 or something like that. And <clears throat> they continue to... Um, they, they, they're they together when they're young and then later on they meet up again and they fall in love. Fanny, on the other hand, is a passionate young African-American man about um, uh, sculpture. He likes sculpting, and he's apparently very good about uh, sculpting with wood. Um, now, these two decide to get married and get into a loft apartment in the Greenwich Village area of New York. Um, but keep in mind, it is 1974. So blacks and whites uh, are still living amongst each other, but with lots of racial tension. And basically, the book starts off with this introduction of who Tish and Fanny are and explaining more in depth uh, uh, about their families and their families are very different. Um, Tish's family is very united and they really care about each other and support each other through thick and thin. Um, Fani's family on the other hand not so solid. Um, his mother is um, extremely religious but she's one of those not so good Christians. You know she goes to church every Sunday and considers herself to be a good Christian, but in fact, she's she's not. She doesn't act like one. And his two sisters are basically looking for Mr. Goodbar or something. They're looking for the right man and not finding him. Um. So basically what happens is they finally settle down into this loft apartment, which um, basically is really a miracle because they don't really have any money and Fanny doesn't really have a real job. And the moment they move into this loft apartment, something happens and Fanny is accused of raping a woman. Now, we know at the beginning of the story that this is not the case, that he has not raped this woman, but he has been conveniently um, put into a lineup um, so that he will be pointed out as the rapist. And that's what happens. They point him out as the rapist, and then he goes to jail. And basically the story is how the family and how Trish reacts to Fanny being locked up and the family and Tish trying to get Fanny out of jail. Both families are struggling to try to get the money together for the lawyer, for, you know, all these things they have to come up with money for to try to get Fanny out of jail. And that's basically what the story is about. I'm not going to go into too much detail. Um, that's pretty much what's written on the back of the book. Um, now, I found this kind of fresh for me because um, you read this book... And it is nine, was written in 1974. So you get all of that, you know, reference to the white man as the man and uh, quite a lot of other um, 
one-liners that some of them are kind of funny um, but give you the the prospect of the difficulty of race relations in the US in the 1970s but I thought the writing was fresh in your face black and white straight gun shooting writing and that's the way I think a lot of uh, of our classic African American writers were writing in the 70s, and I say kudos to them because uh, it's it, it's needed. It was needed uh, to get to where we are today. This kind of of writing was needed, and I think that today, being 2013, um, we should all be trying to read some of these books to get more informed. Um, about racism and African Americans and white people and help us uh, understand better our differences yet to further that we can be together um, in a better way for our future. Um, so I really did enjoy reading this book. Um, I do um, encourage you all to pick it up. It's not uh, very long. It's just just under 200 pages. This is a vintage international edition, so it's actually a pretty nice edition considering because a lot of James Baldwin's books, um, the reprinting, the covers are kind of ugly, a lot of them. But I saw this one, I thought, okay, this is fine. It's a nice um, you know, writing, it's not too small. So it's very in, um, in, enjoyable on the eyes, and the writing is fantastic. So I do uh, encourage you all to pick it up, give it a go. And on top of it, on this one, we have a quote from here on the top, the back of the book, from Joyce Carol Oates, a moving, painful story so vividly human and so obviously based on reality that it strikes us as timeless. And I couldn't have said it better myself. It's exactly what I felt when I was um, reading this book. You know, check this one out. Uh, it's really worth the read.